everybody, welcome back to my channel. And if you're new to my channel, hello, my name is Gabby and welcome. If you've never been here before, never watched any of my videos, have no idea what I do here on my channel, I cover true crime cases and pretty much all the cases that I cover are a little bit older. They're all basically 20 years or older. So if that's something that you might be interested in, maybe down below, click that subscribe button and also make sure to turn on the post notifications to be notified every time that I upload. Now, if you are new here and you have no idea what I do during December, I do have a theme for December on my channel and it is December, which means that for the entire month, I only cover cases of John and Jane Doe's, which I've had my channel for about six years and these are some of my favorite cases to cover. But today's case, we're gonna be talking about a Jane Doe and this Jane Doe, her case has been requested by so many people and there's really not a lot of information online about this case. So I did try to just gather as much as I could to put together this video and really get her case across in full and get her case out there for you all to learn about. So with all that being said, let's just Get right into it this is the case of miss x okay pause before i get to the actual case i do have to mention that there are multiple jane doe cases with a very similar name to this one there's miss x that was found in alabama in the year 1982 and also little miss x found in arizona on halloween of 1958 this though is the case of miss x from the late 60s in delaware so i just want to kind of clear that up for you all on March 18th of the year 1967, authorities made a terrifying discovery on a very rural road a few miles from Interstate 95 in Bear, Delaware. Off of Porter Road, they found the body of a deceased woman, a deceased pregnant woman. The woman's legs were covered with a laundry bag and she was almost completely naked. All she had on was a pair of blue underwear made out of a material very similar to that of a bikini. The tag on these bottoms though had been removed. Other than that, the only other thing that they found was a red ribbon that was used to tie up her hair. Authorities in Delaware were shocked by their findings. There was no identification on this woman. What they found with her was exactly what I just stated. They had very little to go off of, but they examined her remains and examined the area she was found to see if they could find anything else. The first thing they did was they looked at her body to see if there was any signs of trauma and there wasn't. It didn't look like she was malnourished, had been abused, beaten in any way, strangled, nothing like that and it seemed like her body had only been in this location for maybe a day. Looking at her and the area where she was found though, they determined that she had not just walked to this location and just died naturally there. She had died somewhere else and then was dumped in this location. Looking at her body, it didn't seem like foul play was involved. It didn't seem like she was a victim of homicide, but the fact that she had been naked, covered in a laundry bag and dumped there in the middle of pretty much nowhere, someone else obviously had to have been involved. But before they could find out who that person or people were, they needed to find out this woman's identity. For one, like I stated before, this woman was pregnant. She was about three months pregnant. While examining her remains, they did find a strange substance in her vaginal cavity, and it kind of resembled a chemical used back in the day to induce an abortion. So because of this, they did think for some time that she had died due to an abortion going horribly wrong and taking her life in the process. Do you remember that abortion was completely illegal at this time in the United States? They would end up finding out though, within some time, the true cause of her death. Her true cause of death was actually sepsis, which according to the CDC, sepsis is the body's extreme response to an infection. It is a life-threatening medical emergency. Sepsis happens when an infection you already have triggers a chain reaction throughout your body. Infections that lead to sepsis most often start in the lungs, urinary tract, skin, or gastrointestinal tract. Without timely treatment, sepsis can rapidly lead to tissue damage, organ failure, and even death. So sepsis is what killed her, but what kind of infection though? Now, I couldn't find any information on that online, and I'm not entirely sure they ever truly found out. Before I go on in the video, I do want to warn everybody that Miss X's post-mortem photos can be found online, so do be careful if 
that is something that may be triggering to you and you want to research a little bit into this case on your own. Now, when it comes to Miss X, I do have to say that she was an extremely beautiful girl and it was, it was very obvious to tell. Of course, it is a post mortem photo that is online, but you can tell that she was very, very beautiful. It was also guessed that she was between the ages of 16 to 25 years old. She could have been a teenager in her later teen years or possibly a young adult. They're not entirely sure. This is a reconstruction photo done of her by the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children in the year 2013. She was described as being very petite. She was about five feet, two inches tall and weighed about 110 to 115 pounds. She did have a larger bra size though. She was about a 34 double D. She had very dark, long, curly brunette hair and a pale complexion. She had been guessed by many to be possibly Italian, Greek, or Jewish. They are not sure her exact background. She possibly could have been a mix of many different backgrounds, but she definitely had a very unique look to her. She was very, very beautiful. Her blood type, it was O. She had great teeth. They think that she saw a dentist maybe six months to a year before her death. And when it came to markings on her, she didn't have any tattoos, but she did have a vaccination scar on her left thigh. And also she did have her ears pierced, but it looked as if she had not worn earrings in quite some time. Keep in mind that this poor girl, her life ended and her remains were found in 1967. Forensic technology was pretty much nothing back then compared to what it is in today's time. And there was just not a lot to go off of. So the department, they ended up doing what they have to do most of the time back then. They, they created a case file. They did the proper testing and examinations. They did a drawing of what she may have looked like while she was alive. They asked around the area to see if anyone knew her. They checked all the missing persons reports. I mean, that's, that's really all they had. They tried their hardest to discover who this girl could have been, but every time they thought that they were piecing together information and getting somewhere, it was like, bam, like another dead end. So they ended up deciding it was time to give her a burial and they buried her in a potter's field in Newcastle, Delaware. But of course, this doesn't mean that they gave up on her though. They still tried to discover her identity and give her her name back, but it didn't seem like anyone in that area knew who she was. There was no evidence she had any connection to Delaware other than her body being found there. But there was a little evidence when it came to her possibly being connected to another area, another state, that state being New Jersey. Remember how I said that when she was found, her legs were covered in a laundry bag? Well, that white cloth bag that measured 24 inches by 36 inches read bag O dash storage period, American laundry period, dry cleaning period, capital E capital X four space five, two, seven, seven. They ended up tracing the bag back to a laundromat a laundromat named American Laundry Dry Cleaning located at 326 Perry Street in Trenton, New Jersey. According to Hall Brown, who is the deputy director of the Forensic Science Laboratory at Delaware's State Medical Examiner's Office, he says that that is the only piece of evidence that ties this Jane Doe to any geographic area other than Delaware where she was found. Authorities wanted to speak to the owner and see what they had to say, but this didn't get authorities really anywhere because the original owner of the laundromat had since passed away. They did speak to some of this individual's relatives and these relatives did say that the girl looked extremely familiar, that they think that she was a customer, but they weren't 100% sure, and that they had no idea what her name was or where she lived. They thought she could have possibly been a local to that area back then. This laundromat though, I do have to say that in today's time, it has since closed, it's no longer open. With any cold case, there will be phone calls and tips called in to the department. With this case, Promising ones were few and far between. And the main call brought up online is an anonymous caller that called and what they told authorities definitely got authorities attention, but it didn't really lead them anywhere. This anonymous caller called the department and basically said that 
They traveled with a body of a dead woman all the way from Washington to Delaware and then dumped her. And that's basically all that I could find online about this call to the department. There is very little information about this call online. It doesn't seem like authorities took what this caller said very seriously, or if they did, it just, it hasn't been made known to the public. But when it comes to this case, it seems like they think this may have been a prank call or someone making this up. And they said, even if this individual was telling the truth, Miss X had been deceased about 24 hours when they found her. So they just don't think that a person made it from Washington state to Delaware in that amount of time, because it is about a 40 hour drive from Washington to Delaware. I mean, whether that is related to this case directly or not, I do hope that authorities looked into it because that is some crazy stuff to just be spewing out there and not have anyone of authority look into. So I, really, I hope they looked into that. Well, from my research, it seems like in today, the main person on this case is Mr. Hall Brown. He reopened Miss X's case about five to six years ago, and he's been doing everything he can to try to find out who she was. According to an article on nj.com, newjersey.com, he says that he doesn't believe she was ever reported missing because they have looked through so many missing persons reports throughout the country and even worldwide and none of them match up. And I know that everybody sitting at home right now watching this video is probably like, you know, like test her DNA and see if there is any match. Well, they have. See, they put her DNA into the system and they did find matches. They located maternal matches to individuals located in North Carolina and Virginia, but they spoke to these people and these people had absolutely no idea who this woman could have been. They didn't know anyone in their family that she resembled back then, and they didn't know of anyone in their family who had gone missing. So basically at this point, her DNA is in the system and I guess maybe they just have to keep it in the system and see if there is along the way another match that pops up. In the year 2018, a new reconstruction photo was done of Miss X by the incredible Carl Koppelman. And in my opinion, it, it looks the most closest to what she looked like in her post-mortem photo. Now, although she did have some relatives in North Carolina and Virginia, due to the fact that this laundry bag was from a laundromat located in Trenton, New Jersey, and relatives of the owner said that she looked familiar, Hall Brown is focused on the Trenton area and seeing if people in that area remember her at all. This girl, she passed away 54 years ago, so if she was alive today, she would be most likely in her 70s, so they have been focusing their attention on speaking to senior citizens in the Trenton area to see if they remember anything. So far from my research, it doesn't seem like it has gotten them really anywhere though. Also remember that they did believe she had seen a dentist in the last year she was alive. They have tried to discover her identity that way through dental records and again, nothing. Like with any case like this, there are so many theories online, especially from Reddit, you know, Reddit, like there's so many theories on Reddit when it comes to cases. And, and some people, I do have to say, because a lot of times in my videos, I don't really bring up Reddit or opinions on Reddit, but there are a lot of people on there who do bring up some really good theories. There are some people that believe that possibly the infection in her body that resulted in sepsis could have come from a first attempt at an abortion. And then the substance in her vaginal cavity was from a second attempt. No, I'm, I'm not a doctor. I didn't examine her body, but that does make sense. That is a plausible theory. And even people who work on the case believe that that is a very plausible theory. They just, they just don't know. Hall Brown, though, in my opinion, he said it best when he said that she didn't die from an abortion. She died from lack of medical care. If she had proper medical care, she would have been still alive. So whether an attempted abortion or not was even in the picture, she would have still been alive if they were able to properly take care of her when it came to her health. It's 
impossible to really map out a story on someone whose identity we are unsure of, but some people do think that possibly since she was young, maybe it was an unplanned pregnancy and her guardians could have kicked her out because of it. And maybe because of that, she was just never reported missing. But of course, this is just another theory and this is something we don't know. Paul Brown, he believes that Miss X died from sepsis and whoever was close to her during her life at that time kind of just panicked and decided to dispose of her remains somewhere. And they just picked that location where she would later be found. When it comes to who may have been responsible for panicking and dumping her remains in that area in Delaware, a large portion of authorities and people who have looked into this case do think that maybe it was the person who got her pregnant. There are a lot of symptoms of sepsis though, such as high fever, difficulty breathing, low blood pressure, fast heart rate, and also being very mentally confused. Chances are she had some symptoms before dying, and if she had gotten proper medical attention, she would have most likely made it. But who knows why she did not receive this medical attention. Hall Brown states that he is not focused on making any sort of prosecution in this case. His main goal is to find out who she was in life. He wants to solve a family's mystery. This girl was a daughter. She was a granddaughter, maybe a sister or a cousin, a best friend. She was somebody. She had an entire past. She had interests and hobbies. She had memories and someone has to have memories of her. Like with pretty much every unsolved case out there, they're asking the public for help. So if you have any information at all about the case of Miss X, you can contact Brown at 302-577-3420, extension 206, or by email at hall period brown at state period de period us, or contact the Delaware Medical Examiner and Forensic Science Laboratory on Facebook. Police, they have worked on this case for so long and they're not receiving much more to help. So the ones who care about it most are just waiting for the rest of the puzzle pieces to be found to finish this entire puzzle. So that is the case of Miss X, the second December video of this month and another person that I hope more than anything eventually gets their name back and they can have a proper burial. I feel like when it comes to her, the fact that her DNA has been tested, her DNA was put in the system and they did find matches, but these matches didn't know who she was. I feel like for her to finally get her name back, there's just, there's gonna have to be a better hit when it comes to having her DNA in the system. Hopefully another person who is related to her, who knows who she is, will put their DNA into the system and there will be a match and authorities can talk to them and you know piece together everything. I also wanted to just quickly apologize for the lack of videos this month because as soon as December came around, I was like, okay, there's a lot going on in my life, but I wanna get as many videos out as possible because there are so many Jane and John Doe cases that I really, really, really want to talk about. And I kind of told you all in my last video, you know, a lot's been going on. It's been hard to film. I haven't mentally been there. And then two days after I uploaded that video, I had the biggest loss of my entire life, which was my grandmother passing. And I know this video is not about that, but I did want to thank all of my incredible subscribers who have reached out to me about that. This is a necklace that she gave me many years ago. So I wanted to wear it in today's video. And she, she loved my channel and she watched my channel all the time. And she was very proud of me. So I said, you know, I don't want to film today not in the right headspace, but she would want me to keep doing this. So this one is for my grandma and I know this video is not about that, but I just wanted to say that. So thank you again to everybody who's reached out to me and I hope that everybody is having a good holiday season and I will see you all in the next one.